Welcome to our special series on insurance this week at Business in Vancouver. I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. You know, the rhythm of life changed when the pandemic struck, so the structure of how we insure ourselves changed very much too. Our patterns were altered, how much time we spent at home and work, how much or little we traveled, uh, how much we drove, how much we ate, how much we drank, all of it with an impact on the business of insurance, how it sets rates, how it responded in times of crisis. Our podcast series is examining how the insurance industry has adapted and what is ahead for businesses, consumers, and the industry. Joshua Krenis is the CEO and president of Alteri. Uh, Alteri's got a great vantage point in this community about how the industry is changing and adapting in the pandemic. Good you could join us, Josh. Yeah, thanks very much for having me. Uh, so tell me, uh, you know, how soon did you see all of this coming as as an insurer? You know, I think it uh, definitely uh, took the back door for the insurers as well, because I mean, we were plugging along just like everybody else in the beginning of March and uh, kind of shrugging off this uh, thing of the bug that was going around. Uh, we had a few calls early on saying, um, you know, it's, it seems like this is, is gonna take a harsh turn and, and you know, what are, our, what are our coverage options here and et cetera. And, um, you know, it was a really, really slow, uh, slow decision um, leading up to uh, what eventually would be, you know, the pandemic on the insurer side, for sure. Yeah, like a lot of businesses, um, yeah. you, you know, initially downplaying something and then realizing that actually it might even be more serious than a serious estimation, right? Yeah, and I think it just it helped us get through it in the beginning. Just, uh, you know, if, if you don't realize that it's actually there, then it won't affect you. <laughs> but uh, eventually it was just uh, too great to ignore and uh, everybody, including the insurers, had to respond. I can only imagine what it uh, amounts to with, um, with an industry that actually tries to look comprehensively at the world and factor in the level of risk. Right? Yeah in each yeah. of these cases, if, if I'm explaining insurance somewhat elementarily. Uh, so I, how do you begin to respond? Where, where do you start? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that, uh, you know, whether it was right or not, they, they began by responding um, and continue to uh, help with regards to premium. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they originally acknowledged, okay, um, there's nothing in policy wordings about pandemics. Um, therefore, you know, they're not covered. Um, but what we can do is we can defer premiums. Uh, we can lower premiums. We can extend your policy term. Uh, we can look mm -hmm. at your business individually and try to help you out that way. And that's kind of what insurers did. Um, you know, very similar to other business uh, businesses like the in, in financing, they just, they tried to help out the wallet a bit instead of uh, going after coverage. And now obviously moving forward, they're going to have to start thinking, okay, what, what are we covering? with regards to stuff like this moving forward. Where did the um, where did the pressure on the industry in terms of claims come in? Were a lot of people of the assumption that they had something approaching a pandemic insurance, but really they had something a little different? You know what, it's interesting. Um, we actually, uh, you know, as, as client facing brokers uh, felt that everybody took it really well. Um, no. you know, they, they didn't assume that there was coverage for something so strange, um, as this pandemic coming upon us, it was, it was actually really nice to see. Um, and by them giving us that response, everybody kind of worked together, uh, to find the right solution, which ended up being like the premium deferrals and, and extending terms and et cetera. Yeah. Um, might we just see though, obviously, uh, uh, because there is a bigger cost of doing business now in all of this, just uh, by, uh, by extension, uh, some larger premiums that we're, we're bound to face in order to have this? Is this just the, now the new price of, of dealing with the world? Yeah, you know what? I think the unfortunate fact of the matter is that it is now a new risk that has been realized and mm -hmm. that risk needs to be taken into account. And, and the only way to do that is to increase premium and to add coverage. Um, one of the big things you're going to deal with is business interruption um, coverage for revenues that we didn't see uh, coming from this. You know, we thought it would be flood and fire and, and et cetera, not, yeah. not pandemics. So yeah, I think the answer, yes, I think it will affect premiums moving forward for sure. What, again, what, what kind of adaptation 
should we be doing as businesses when we're looking at and at how we insure ourselves now? What what is the prudent course that you're advising businesses on? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that this pandemic has proven uh, to everybody is that we had a lot more time uh, to examine uh, how we were running our businesses, both financially uh, from an insurance stance, uh, how we were treating our customers that were coming in, et cetera. Um, And for the insurance side of it, uh, we really realized that people, when they took that time, they were a lot more scrutinous of those policies and their wordings and what was covered, et cetera. And it was our job to explain it to them. And so my uh, explanation was always, um, where does your risk lie for your business? What is the most important thing in the world to you? If your doors were mandatorily closed, um, would that affect you? Or can you do stuff online? Obviously, a lot of the restaurants and stuff can't. Um, so from that stance, um, I think even as brokers, we have a, a much better understanding of, of what is truly at risk uh, with each individual business. And that's kind of the education piece I try to hand off is forget about insurance and all that. Just um, what is the greatest risk to you and your business? And let's talk about insuring that. Yeah. I mean, anytime I've worked with insurers, they, they've really done a lot of diligent work in trying to help me understand, you know, if it's my household, my contents, uh, whatever it is that I'm looking in, you know, yeah. obviously life insurance and things like that too. Yeah. Uh, but um, in this way here, do you think the pandemic has caused businesses to do this thorough reevaluation, uh, except the fact that they were overinsured in certain areas, underinsured in others? And getting a balance closer to what, you know, because now you, you are under the gun a bit to really get much more precise about where your risks are in your operations. Yeah, absolutely. I think you, I think you nailed it. I think there's a, a much uh, bigger force at play here now with, with insurers to actually look at things. And, you know, at this one, you can't delete this one. We need to move forward and see what we can do from a coverage stance on this stuff. And it's just like anything, I think, you know, um, it, until the the wildfires really started happening in BC, um, insurers weren't weren't really that concerned about it. Now, um, you can't bind coverage uh, in certain parts of BC because uh, they're just too risky. Um, so you have to go to like Lloyd's of London. You can't use a Canadian insurer anymore. So there's a lot of things like that that the pandemic will also do. And I think uh, we don't know what that looks like yet. Uh, but it certainly needs to be addressed, and it will be. I'm, I'm certain. Even if you look at somebody like, uh, it was a really cool program that Manual Life just came out with in um, uh, in association with Air Canada, and they said basically anybody who flies Air Canada round trip to right. get COVID, we're going to cover you. Um, yeah. That was a really cool response uh, mm-hmm. to that, and it was free. Um, so I think you know there's going to be a lot more creative stuff around that. I think the perception of the insurance business is that it is one giant global pool. Right. That right. essentially, I mean, it, and yet, you know, you talk about the BC wildfires, and I've, I've heard other uh, places talk about their local conditions. So, tell me a little bit about whether there is any kind of an advantage uh, to be in BC right now, the way that COVID is being handled, um, as opposed to say another jurisdiction, and what how that might reflect in the kinds of policies and their expense that we might have. Yeah, for sure. I think, yes, there is definitely an advantage uh, versus, you know, certainly the states um, and even our friends back east, because a lot of underwriters right now are realizing that we've handled this reopening appropriately, despite um, the inevitable uh, increase in numbers. Uh, And they're also, you know, seeing that operations have remained open since the reopening. Um, And so these business interruption expense coverages, uh, these liability coverages for their customers coming in are things that are remaining open and the coverage is still in force for them. Mm-hmm. And I can't speak for the people back East, um, but uh, I can certainly say it would be a lot more challenging uh, for them uh, seeing as, as their numbers are so much greater. So the stewardship of public health authorities of governments, it can go quite some distance in mm-hmm. terms of um, a really uh, setting almost the rates that you're going to be able to charge uh, for certain types of, uh, of premiums, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think they they certainly uh, work together with those decisions made by government, so that they know um, that just it it seems that BC has been 
um, quite predictable in its in its approach to the pandemic, i.e., we take it very seriously. Um, so, uh, in, from that respect, um, we know that things aren't going to be open if it's not appropriate, and and that's a great uh, that's a great thing from an insurer's perspective. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, one of the things that happens, uh, you know, when you take out insurance, the insurer will actually say to you, Hey, by the way, you know, don't leave your car unlocked. Right. You know, yeah. Like, or, yeah, <laughs> or, you know, uh, when you're leaving your house, uh, think about, you know, closing the door. Um, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, what kinds of sage advice though, are you providing businesses at the moment? about their own sense of risk and what kinds of practices they might institute in order to essentially be better insured and, and more wisely uh, protecting themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a great example is someone uh, I have who's uh, a gym owner who would be obviously tremendously impacted by this uh, when it all first went down. And one of the things that you know you have to understand from the client's perspective is that, yeah, this is going to be really, really hard on them. Um, you know, insurance aside, again, this is insane. They're going to have to close their business and this is their livelihood. So what I instilled in this individual was that uh, who, who really wanted to remain open was just think of it as if you're taking every single precaution necessarily and you're not ordered to close, then um, the insurer is going to like that. And we need to document that and we need to showcase that you are taking this very seriously. And the only reason you're staying open is because you need to. Um, and that's exactly what he did. Um, he's, uh, you know, used the government loan to put in protection. Uh, he's obviously lost tremendous revenue by his own choice because he's spreading out his clients. He's making sure that there's only a certain number of people in the building. Um, and I've had these conversations with a lot of different clients and just said to them, you know, you need to make sure that uh, you're taking care of this situation as much as possible and the insurers will respond. And they have. Yeah. When you look at um, business interruption, I mean, it can come in a lot of different forms. And it can obviously be, yeah. you know, supply chain breaks down, uh, you know, you lose clients and that kind of thing. Is, is there also emerging a, a, a real concern in the, in the, among insurers about things like um, the mental health issues involving employees and how that is interrupting business as well? That's a good um a really good question. Uh, it's one of the things that I've noticed from the uh, group benefits side of the business is that there's a tremendous, um, you know, uh, placement of of energy and focus on mental health, and actually uh, not only using their current policy for group benefits to um, add coverage that way, but they're actually taking out separate plans, EAP plans, for the purpose of mental health so that employees can speak to professionals on this matter. And they're taking it very seriously from an actual insurability, i.e., uh, you know, a claim made against a business for uh, mental health. You know, we're not really there yet. Um, I haven't seen a lot of that come across, but I've seen employers specifically uh, putting a lot of effort and energy into making sure that there's options for the employees that do want to, to use benefits like that for sure. Yeah, sure. And, and obviously we're, uh, workplace safety uh, is a major consideration. Absolutely. Kind of yeah, absolutely. Is, is there anything yet emerging, Joshua, that you feel is permanent uh, in the way of a, a change in insurance as a result of the pandemic? Uh, you know, it's interesting. Yes. Um, I've seen uh, some things happen uh, that, you know, even for, you know, from a coverage stance, uh, we've started to see a lot of commercial business come back uh, in six month terms, which is very unusual. Uh, before the pandemic happened, it, they were actually starting to do two year renewals. So yeah. if you wanted to, you could pay all right now and we won't talk to you again for two years. And a lot of people took that option. Uh, now they're coming back with six months, uh, which showcases us, uh, okay, they're, they're concerned about how much the world can change and coverage can change in six months. Is that what they're telling you? Is that, is that what you think it is? Yeah. There's the, so much uncertainty that they, they want to be able to reevaluate in the space of a few months? Yeah, I think they do. And I, I think there's just so much uncertainty, pandemic aside. Um, and, and one of the things that they're, you know, I mean, insurance is, is widely understood to be, you know, archaic in the way that the day-to-day -day is run. That's why there's so much opportunity in it. Um, but from an insurer's stance, all these people had to go home. All the underwriters, um, even the broker side, everybody had to go home. And it was the first time really that they had to deal with that. And the technology just was not there. They just did not need to use that in-house and they were forced to. Um, so there was 
you know, huge slowdown and everything. And I think that could be also a contributor to, to releasing policies with less terms so they can sit down again when everything's calmed down and say, okay, let's, let's get back to normal. I want to close with a little bit about the innovation in your space because mm -hmm. almost everywhere I've seen uh, that people have talked about the acceleration toward digital, you know, yeah. coming up with new ways in order to do some of the traditional things. Mm -hmm. What What's happened with insurance? What kinds of innovations are there now? So the, the innovations for insurance um, are, it's, it's such a, a wide uh, variety. Like there's so many different channels where that's taken place. So one of them is obviously the insurer to the broker. Um, that mm -hmm. technology platform has, has really gone through the roof. It's an amazing, uh, you know, uh, communication system now between the broker and the underwriter. So that's really increased. Um, there's obviously uh, direct to consumer options now that are directly online, which is excellent. Um, and then internally, uh, like in our brokerage, there's there's uh, some excellent technology just for, for teams to communicate specifically on insurance. Um, and that really uh, streamlines not only the educational process for, for the broker, but um, just the ability to, to actually bind for clients uh, quickly and efficiently. So there's a lot of different channels, uh, but it's helped a lot. I mean, some of the traditional insurance um, you know, brokerages, I guess, would, uh, would largely sell their sell their materials face to face. You'd have a meeting with an insurer. You'd yeah. walk through that. They'd come to your work site. You'd go to their office. Those kinds of things. Uh, is there anything lost now? You think almost in a permanent way with with not necessarily having that uh, in office experience? Well, you know, I, yes. Um, I think that there's you know certain lines of business within insurance that are simply inevitable to. To change and some that are inevitable to never change, um, you know, relatively speaking. Um, you look at BC Auto Plan, I mean, like 95% of business, you know, uh, insurance brokerages in BC are, are auto plan driven. It's insane. Uh, so, from that perspective, um, obviously their business model changed overnight um, and ICBC had to respond. So, uh, now you can do your renewals over the phone and, and take credit card information over the phone and email your renewal. I mean, it was, it was craziness how fast ICBC changed it. And uh, they hadn't done anything since the pandemic. So, this was uh, really, really unusual. So, now we're seeing the you know, businesses reopen and everything. And we're saying, okay, so how's this going to respond? Is ICBC going to take this back or are they going to continue? And then they've continued. Uh, you have things like that with ICBC. And then you have, you know, the uh, stepping aside away from from the auto plan brokers, um, you just have this this um, unbelievable amount of people uh, coming together to say it's a product push. So we're gonna we're gonna make home and tenants insurance online, and we're gonna do all this stuff online for the client. But at the end of the day, if you're dealing with high net worth individuals um, that own a portfolio of commercial properties. Um, and they have a ton of risk. You just, the simple fact of the matter is you just cannot do that online. Like you, you mm -hmm. cannot underwrite seven commercial buildings for one person online. You just can't do it. So, um, but we can streamline the process. So the communication systems can be there. Uh, the communication between underwriter and broker, broker and client. Um, there's tons of technology to support it and supplement it. But uh, as far as client facing and ensuring their own things on themselves, uh, that's, that's a little bit beyond us, I think, right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, last, last question. I mean, in, in terms of the um, the overall stability of the system in this, I, mean, I think people look at a cataclysmic event like yeah. the pandemic and wonder which institutions are going to fail. In all yes. That. Yeah, uh, of course. So, how how stable do you feel the insurance system is, uh, so that it you know it, it can not only equip itself to deal with what we're now going through, but help us be prepared for the next time, which is seemingly inevitable. Yeah. Um, I personally feel very comfortable. I think that they've done a tremendous job um, and would have lost, you know, a small fortune in the decisions they did make uh, in supporting the clients. Um, like I said, through their, their premium deferral plans and their, their uh, extension of terms and they would have lost a lot of money. Um, so I felt really um, uh, proud uh, for the Canadian insurers that were making those decisions um, and did it properly. I've heard 
you know, from directly from the client's mouth, um, you know, if you just take uh, another example, like earthquake, um, some clients will say, uh, there's no way I'm going to get earthquake on my house because if, if this happens here, all the insurers are going to go under. Right. Um, so is there any validity to that? Uh, you know, I don't think so because uh, obviously the risk is spread. So if something happens in BC, it doesn't take down the whole ship. But with a pandemic, it's an interesting question because um, obviously this is a global issue. So uh, it's it's not spread. It's it's directly with the insurers. So I think that they need to be very careful moving forward about how they're going to respond to these in this inevitable you know future of this happening again. And and I think they will. And they've done a right. They've done a good job to date. And I think we can expect to see. Uh, some coverage moving forward with stuff like this in the future, definitely. Yeah, well, it's a great conversation. Such a fascinating area because it, it's it's like in the back of our minds at all time. But what kind yeah. of risk we have here, and uh, what we need to do in order to uh, mitigate that risk. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you for your time, Joshua. It's been great talking to you. No, thanks a lot, Kirk. I appreciate it. Joshua Krennis is the CEO, president of Alteri, the Vancouver-based insurance brokerage. You've been watching our special series on insurance this week. I'm Kirk LaPointe from Business in Vancouver. We'll see you again.